I'm Stephanie McCraney. I'm here at Able Nook. We're located in beautiful Tampa, Florida. We're in our warehouse here where we have two prototypes built. Right behind me, we have our three bay unit. And I'd like to give you a quick tour of this first unit here. Able Nook's been around for several years now. The original concept actually started when Sean was doing a project after Hurricane Katrina came through. Uh, he wanted to create something for disaster relief. That was the first intention for Able Nook. Something that could be flat packed, many units could be shipped at once, but then didn't need heavy tools, didn't need big machinery or you know large scale foundations. And then when people moved into them, they just lost everything. So something that had dignity for people that just lost everything that they own. So that was the original idea behind Able Nook. But when Sean built the first prototype, they realized it's so nice that people thought this is, you know, even beyond disaster relief. This is something that people are wanting for their own residences to do for Airbnb, to do for all different kinds of um, uses for the Able Nook, uh, in addition to disaster relief. And Able Nook in the production process is the designer and the manufacturer. So Able Nook, we're going into our first production round. We will serve here mainly as a marketing sales and design center here in Tampa. And we will be doing, uh, basically serving as a fulfillment center and shipping out all the units to their location. We are currently putting together teams as Able Nook certified teams that come here and they train. And then once the Able Nook is shipped to a location, they will go there and then uh, also can assemble the Able Nook on site. So this is actually the second prototype. I can walk around and show you the first one, but correct on production. We are going to our first production round, which is actually sold out. We just wanted to do 30 units to begin to make sure we were on the ground for all 30. Um, and we have them going all over the United States and actually to going internationally to Israel. This is actually the first prototype that Sean built. Sean is the C CEO, the founder, Sean Verdesia. Okay. We have Able Nook, this is 001 to show it is the very first one that we built. And this is a single bay and you can tell, basically think of it as components like, we like to say Lego, but it can be infinitely expanded. Each one of these uh, bays can be added upon. So this is a single bay because it has one, one bay, one cube as you can see, and a single porch. And so Sean actually, when he was building this, he used it as his uh, office, his studio. So we actually have this for sale as well. So some people that, especially right now, during times where a lot of people are working from home, this could be an outside studio, outside office. This current one um, does not have a bathroom on the back, attached to the back, but we can add a bathroom pod as well. The first unit was completed around 20, uh, 2007, and the second unit, mm -hmm. the second prototype was completed in uh, 2017, so about 10 years later, when more funding came in from uh, supporters and investors. And sorry, Jojo, do you want to give a quick uh, introduction of yourself, too, since you're on the phone here, uh, providing some, some additional context and, and uh, input? Yes, uh, my name is Giorgio Bazzigaluppi. I am a, an engineer and I started Able Nook in 2017 to help Sean uh, propel the company forward and build the second prototype and help with the production line, etc. I'm more involved in the purchasing and logistics side. Currently, this is where we will be doing our sales center and design. Uh, our manufacturers work, all the components are going to be uh, basically shipped to us. Giorgio, maybe you could speak a little bit more. I know that some of it will most likely we manufacture here. Yeah, I don't know, Stephanie, if you want to take a peek behind the curtain quite literally, but that's going to be sure. where our prototyping essentially, most of our prototyping happens. And uh, a lot of the manufacturing requires heavy machinery like extruders, et cetera, which uh, are you know high costs and something that we don't want to incur right now. So we're going to have a lot of the parts shipped to us, but light modifications will be done in this warehouse. Or can you just tell me a little more about kind of who's interested in, in buying one right now and for what use? Yes, for the first 30, it is private sales, more residential, either a primary primary residence or people interested in an ADU component for their primary residence. What, what started the whole Able Nook uh, movement? It was Katrina. That was Sean's first idea to build something that could literally be shipped and 
put anywhere. The idea is that the able note can go up fast, but then also it can withstand, say another storm came through, that it would be strong, structurally strong, and then actually beautiful to live in as well. And as far as the uh, kind of moving from the conceptual to the prototype stage, where where are you now in state certifications? Is this is this going to be certified under like the manufactured housing code for HUD, or what what kind of certifications and to what to what code are you building this this, this model? Yes, so the Able Nook is built according to Miami Dade standard for wind codes mainly because our, our most of our clients are situated here in Florida, and we have a particularly um, you know we're particularly close to Florida because we live here. Uh, so. We also found out that uh, Florida wind codes are one of the harshest wind codes in the country. So we're trying to proof test it to the harshest codes that the country has. That way we can distribute it easily across the nation. There are some limitations to this. California and uh, you know Northern Michigan, et cetera, might have a, uh, different building codes because of uh, earthquakes and uh, insulation requirements. But uh, and we'll take care of that in the future. For now, we're focusing on uh, Miami-Dade building codes. We're trying to get HUD as well, and it'll be certified as a primary residence, so it'll have to survive uh, Hurricane five winds, which are 180 miles an hour. 180 miles an hour. That's correct. Yes, that's what Hurricane five is categorized okay. as. Uh, getting certified under full product approval for certain of our items, like the windows and the doors, etc., that are a little bit more sensitive. Um, but uh, we will move forward in the next coming years with the certifications to adapt to uh, California building codes and um, like Northern Michigan building codes, which require higher insulation codes, et cetera. At this time, uh, we are trying to be efficient about it. And there are certain limitations when it comes to space and logistics, which the insulation uh, doesn't exactly cover yet. Yeah. Um, so we can't uh, adopt those, those areas, but we will soon. And are pre-sales limited to that specific geography, just in terms of the Miami um, building code? Or if there's anything specific needed for a site, we are addressing that. But most of our sales are in Florida at this point. We step on in, and we can talk about the, the ins and outs of this unit. What, what's the size of this uh, unit again? So this is our three bay unit. It's 238 square feet interior. What's Each the, cube yeah. is eight, eight feet, four inches. This is a cube. So that's the dimensions on, on the sides. So the length is 32 or 24, <laughs> 24 feet. <long. laughs> plus, the, plus the front porch. And then we have a bathroom pod and mechanical bay in the back. So when you add the porch and the mechanical bay on, how long does that become? The the uh, bathroom pod is another eight feet, four inches. Um, and then mm. the mechanical bay will add another couple of feet. So it's about 36 feet, 37 feet. And and how was the pod, this eight, and a, eight foot, four inch square concept? Uh, how did that come to be? Why, why that size? Why, why, why do a square pod? shape uh most panels and uh, uh standard building codes are eight foot long and so we wanted to try and minimize costs by minimizing the modifications on these panels and in doing so we translate all the savings to the customer and the end user and so in order to meet that requirement we have to make it fit in eight feet and four inches and the roof uh or the ceiling heights what are, what are those goes up to 10 feet here as you can see the cross beams are at eight feet and then those windows at the top makes it 10 feet interior oh wow yeah, i guess like, it's probably hard to tell in the video but there's so there's a there's a curvature to the to the roof there is i'm trying to get it on the video for you kitchen right below, right in front of you right there right it is actually a gas stove here we have a propane tank below on one of the footers oh, okay and is this uh, also available to do all electric or is this design just with the propane tank in mind we can switch it out for electric there are certain limitations because of uh building codes uh, to go full electric on the kitchen um mm -hmm. the because of the house being on stilts and the mechanical bay having limitations on the electrical draw, um, 
we kind of either have a water heater in the bathroom that is propane or a stove that is propane, um, but something uh, might need to be propane. The refrigerator is very large, but if we trade the refrigerator for a smaller unit, we can uh, probably accust, uh, adjust it to a uh, full electric. Even also if we choose a smaller stove or something like that, we can accommodate for full electric. And is there a uh, space for a washer dryer in the, in this uh, floor plan as well? It will actually come included since this is a working prototype. This will be a little bit different in the ones that are actually going out. So as we're going to the bathroom here, instead of the bathroom pod being right here, there will actually be a space for a washer dryer and then the bathroom pod. And this will be pushed out. It'll be uh, an additional three feet on this side. So the bathroom will be larger as well. Yeah, the current bathroom pod is only five feet uh, in uh, length by eight feet width. Uh, we're going to extend it to another three feet, making another eight foot bay, making all bays eight feet uh, like the other ones. And that extra three feet will ac accommodate the uh, washer dryer stacked. Bathroom is a wet room bathroom, so okay. you can get everything wet without any worries. The drain will be underneath uh, the uh, wood slats uh, that you can see. That way you can lift them easily and not worry about cleaning necessarily. You can all just hose everything down and not worry about it. Can you talk a little more about the materials um, on the inside, both, I guess, on the on the walls in the bathroom, and then I saw some wood finishes and, and sort of what the panels are, are made of? So the wall panels are a uh, ACM material with uh, that will uh, cover a half an inch thick uh, wood material, and then that will be attached to foam, which will provide the insulation requirements as, long, as, as well as uh, vapor barriers and uh, all sorts of gaskets to make sure that everything is nice and sealed. Um, the nature of the able nook is that it can be mounted and dismounted with ease. Uh, so we can't have any caulking going on. So we need to have uh, the, the technology that we came up with was essentially very close to the idea of a car door where you don't have to caulk the car door shut every time, but it is uh, rainproof and you know uh, waterproof while you're driving. So that's the uh, main walls, and those are also the principle of the roof panels. The bathroom panels in this video uh, are not uh, the ones that we're going to use. We're going to use the same ones also for the bathroom. The, the interior side of the panels are going to be different because it has to be a wet room. Uh, so on the house side, uh, the interior panels are mostly decorative. They don't really function as anything other than to hide the guts of the house. Uh, but on the bathroom side, they're going to be stainless steel. That way you can wipe them clean and not worry about it. When it comes to the floor panels, uh, there are different panels. There are essentially two or three panels. I think we're, we got it down to two right now. The bottom panel is a structural component that will make sure that we can hold all the weight that the house needs to hold and provide the insulation required. Uh, I think it's R20 right now. Uh, and on top of that, there's going to be a very uh, thinner uh, decorative panel that will have hardwoods and uh, or a vinyl. It's a it's a it's a customary panel. It's something that we uh, we it's a company that we found out in California. It's uh, very easy to change these panels up, and you can have a different square footage of it. And depending on what the customer wants, we'll be able to change it based on that. Um, in the case of a disaster relief scenario. The, limit, the, the options of customization obviously are going to be limited. It's going to be more cost-saving uh, objective uh, rather than the customization objective. And as far as like customization, um, or I guess the uh, different design for a disaster scenario of housing versus a personal or private use, is it, how different would the finishes be for a utilitarian version, like a, like a I guess, a lower cost version? Because I'm, I'm assuming these are the higher end finishes, the 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 wood that you're using on the flooring and the um, the the panel finish, or what, how would that be different for the utilitarian version? The decorative side won't be of the floor won't be that different between the two. There's going to be some limitations because we don't want to put wood if there's going to be a hurricane traveling through and people are going to track mud and stuff like that. There's no need for some hard woods. We might do more vinyl. Uh, solutions uh, when it comes to the walls these walls are actually made of a of a texture of like a like a clothing texture and uh, that's not something conducive to a disaster relief scenario so we're going to do more of a hard vinyl also you know but vinyl uh, comes with the ability to change colors 
uh, two different in different aspects. So we're going to have some limitations of colors in agreement with our suppliers, um, but that can be a range. Uh, when it comes to the difference in the, uh, the furnishing, the furnishing and the kitchens between the designer and the uh, disaster relief solution, this is a designer kitchen with smeg and high and appliances. That won't be the case for the disaster relief solution. Um, mainly because we want to make sure that uh, governments and agencies will be able to afford it. And there's no need to aim for luxury because it's just an extra cost. So here's your double sink. And then underneath here is actually, oops, sorry, the phone's like, is actually going to be your trash can area. Uh, okay, got it. We're trying to find uh, all the nooks and crannies to kind of maximize oh, very cool. the utility of the, the secret, yeah. the secret spices. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and then also everything, we try to make space for everything. This right here on top of our wine rack, it serves not only as a cutting board, but you can also try to, sorry, and try to hold the sand at the same time, uh, move it over on top of the sink. And so you have one flat surface across. So now you have all this countertop space. It's a so we have a door here that goes out to our side porch. The three bay unit comes with two porches, the front porch that we came in, and then the side porch to the unit. So let me kind of give you a better view of that. Well, yeah, I love how it has some, some deck space. Wall panels are all one big panel and the exterior is the ACM, which is the same material that architects use for skyscrapers and uh, poster boards and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a, a plastic core sandwich between two aluminum sheets on the inside of which uh, it's the insulation and uh, some space for electrical outlets, et cetera, on the bottom panel. The upper panels don't have any electrical outlets. Um, and on the outside instead, it has the uh, wet proof material and gasketing so that I can completely seal uh, the elements outside. Well, it's currently the most used uh, architectural panel in the buildings period, okay. um, ACM uh, panels. And the moisture control, because it's a core plastic and uh, uh, aluminum exterior, it's uh, pretty resilient to um, moisture. The issue with it would be if water intrusion, uh, you know, because it's four panels stacked on each other, there are gonna be gaps, et cetera, where rain can enter if it's raining sideways, et cetera, especially here in Florida, we get a lot of sideways rain because of hurricane winds, et cetera. But because we are adding all these gaskets and all these uh, insulation requirements and the vapor barrier on the inside, that's gonna add the, uh, all the requirements to make sure that it passes building codes. Got it. And when you were speaking about the car door latch how, what, how does that design incorporate it all the panels are in sizes the heavy the bit largest panels are in the size of uh, 96 inches by uh, 48 inches which is eight feet by four so all the panels are built and none of them are going, should be heavier than 50 pounds all the panels are built so that two laymen will be able to lift them and put them together um if i don't the car Door latch technology comes on the inside of the panels or on the underneath side in case of the uh, patio porch area so that you can lock the panels to the fins of the beams. I don't know, Stephanie, if you can show them the fins of the beams a little Coming bit. Coming in right now. Yeah. Or if you can uh, pull off one of the decorative units. Uh, oh, yeah, like under the window or above it. Yeah, so that latch right there essentially is clipping onto the fins of the beams. The beams have all these fins going all around it, and that will make sure that the panel will, it's a simple one motion construction. You just put it down and push it into place, and then you come on the inside, it'll be able to lock it into place. So the whole structure can be built easily and can be built safely. And one of the things we were worried about is to ensure that no one will be able to come from the outside and disassemble the unit while you're sleeping. Um, <laughs> you only will be able to take it apart from the inside, take apart all the decorative panels, et cetera, first. Very much like a yacht. That's exactly how it works. It's very intuitive. We didn't make, yeah, the, the, one of the points that we wanted to drive is that any layman should be able to build this. Um, obviously, a lot of our customers have shown an interest in not building it. Rather, they won't have someone else build it. And so in order to do that, we did that program that Stephanie mentioned earlier about uh, issuing licenses to builders so that they are licensed builders by able, nook and covered by warranty, et cetera, for any 
for any damage. But the, the, the prime concept of the Able Nook is that anyone should be able to put it together in a very quick way so that uh, the economy of a disaster area can recover more quickly and uh, you know bring back all the cash. But uh, pr the principle is exactly as you said, it'll come, the whole Able Nook should be able to fit uh, in, a, in a trailer and uh, you can first build uh, the foundations if they're required in your state. We, they are required in Florida to meet building to meet uh, uh, Miami Dade standards codes. But once those are done, you should be able to put down the feet and then set up the whole skeleton structure. We call it the exoskeleton. And then after that, you just place a panel on the beams, which are all the same shape, and then push it in. And then the panels will be able to accept. You know, they have a male under on the bottom, or sorry, they have a male on the top and a female on the bottom. So you just stack the panels on one on top of the other and just push them in. And then from the inside, you'll be able to access it and lock them into place so that they don't fall apart in case, you know, uh, the pushing in motion is more of a temporary measure to make sure that you're not have to hold it while uh, uh, locking it into place. The roof is a, is also three panels or how does that, how is that attached? I guess you do need to be, is it light enough to, be on a ladder and snap it in or how, how do you how do you put it in at like 10 feet 10 feet off the ground right so the roof uh, you should be able to walk on the roof um and we will provide uh high ladders so that you can bring the ladders on the inside of the able nook uh once you built the floor of the unit you'll be able to access the able nook from the inside set up the ladders and you can put the panels up uh, and they're very simple. The principle of the panel is the same as the wall. So you put the first one and you just drop it. You let it fall onto uh, the roof. And the roof assembly has the same fins shape that the walls or the, that the beams have on the uh, internal columns. And the car door latch situation will snap into place. And then you'll be able to lock the panels. And then you stack them going all the way to the back or from the back to the front. Um, after that, the roof will have to have a membrane set on top of it that will lock into the sides of the, uh, uh, the side fins, which are the same ones that support and lock mechanism of the panels, and that will make it rainproof. The membrane I'm talking about is, this, is a, it's a PTO type membrane. It's not exactly PTO type. It's, it's a, from a company called Duralast, which is a very strong material that we tested. Should be about 40 milli, milli inches long, uh, thick. And it's the same type of material that you use on top of big box stores uh, where well, they weld them together and make a big, you know, uh, flat roof and make sure that it's snowproof and waterproof. Excuse me. The membrane, yeah, it won't need any sealing. It will be uh, sealed prior. It will be uh, chemically bonded to something called a Keter, ray, a Keter uh, rope which will then mechanically fasten to something called a Keter rail, which is the sister uh, product of the Keter, Keter rope. And that is welded to the um, uh, roof beams, which are the same ones to which the panels attach. So essentially the panels will be completely covered by this roof membrane. And this roof membrane will dip into these fins that will then create a gutter system. So the water will be able to fall on the roof into the gutter system and down the roof. That's why it's also curved down the roof and off. Um, it's also fair to say that the uh, disaster relief version is unlikely to have a curved roof. The curved roof is a designer look that will give gives the able look its identity for the designer purpose, but it is quite expensive to manufacture and produce because of the curvature of it. Um, it's much easier to build straight parts and uh, the disaster relief to make it that much more of a discount uh, will have probably a flat roof. I also wanted to highlight this built-in armoire. So we have this rune divider that we have that we just thought it was stylish and kind of carried out the same theme that we have out in the coverings of the porch and also potential coverings for the window. So you can have a little bit of a dividing area for your rooms. And then we also built in this armoire so we can have more storage. So it actually has a hanging sh storage as well as a floor storage. So here's our hanging unit. Oh, wow. I, I, need, I need one of those in my closet, given, given how small my closet is. <laughs> I know, like, I'm a girl. I need more hanging storage. This is perfect. And then here's more storage down here. 
We also built in storage for below the bed and below the couch area. If this is how you would want to have your bed area. So the everything comes included with Able Nook minus actual bed and the couch. So What's this that? is a double. Double. Okay. This is a double. Can you fit a queen in there? You might be able to fit a queen. I know, Giorgio, maybe you can uh, speak to this. As part of it is this door entrance right here. I do have ones where we are actually selling a six bay, which would be two of these clicked together. And so it would be double wide. And so then you could obviously fit a queen in the six bay. Yeah, with the new design of the bathroom uh, coming mm -hmm. in, you should be able to fit a queen. Uh, okay. Uh, to, yeah, it'll be uh, right before the washer dryer area. We have this TV mounted here to show you actually another idea of a floor plan. Our plan is to have this on a swivel so this can actually pull out and go right here on the window. So if you are sitting in your couch area, you could easily watch the TV from your living room space. So the, it can go on uneven terrain. That's one of the beautiful things about Able Look is that the terrain can be uneven. So these can be adjusted to your area. So you can see these are raised on our three bay, on our single bay over here, you can see that they're a little bit lower. Yeah, the feet are easily customizable parts. Uh, the standard foot is the one that you see on the three bay that Stephanie is showing right now. Uh, the the have to be the minimum height of these is three feet, and that's uh, designed for a purpose. It's mainly because of the economy of the part to make sure that it's something that we can build quite easily and cheaply. But it's also to protect the house from allowing vermin and other type of animals to hide underneath it. It's too tall for any animal to feel safe. Uh, and uh, it'll, you know, you, you can't have a skirt. It also allows the able nook to uh, extra insulate, add, have, excuse me, have extra insulation um, based on the bungalow style home design theory. Um, this, the jacks can lift, I believe, 12 inches each. Uh, obviously, it's not advised that you raise one of them 12 inches and leave the other ones level. Um, the idea is exactly as you said, it's just, just fine tune the able nook so that it is level independently of where you set it up. Um, if you can see these feet have holes in them, the holes are meant also for a purpose is both to make manufacturing lighter and the parts lighter, but it's also because the J bolts, which are the foundations uh, of the, uh, that will go underneath it will come through these and you'll be able to tighten them down, uh, making the able nook uh, hurricane proof quite pretty much and preventing lift because one of the problems of being so tall is yeah. that you're going to have a lot of air lift coming in from the underneath. And that's why each foot is going to have its own unique, uh, uh, it's going to be a concrete pylon with J bolts coming out. And uh, the multiplication factor of the quantity of feet is what's making the able look so grounded uh, and pass building codes. If uh, the propane tank is gonna be uh, probably larger than that in order to accommodate, you know, a lifestyle that doesn't require changing it every two weeks. Um, so <laughs> it might be, you know, dug underground or set on the side and it might be more like a 50 gallon tank. But we wanted to ensure, we wanted to show that uh, even if it's not a 50 gallon tank, you can still put a smaller tank and it will still be serviced. Oh, the able nook actually is now designed to be part of the grid. In Florida, uh, um, Florida law doesn't allow housing to be considered off the grid. You have to be part of the grid. Uh, so we have to have a plug-in going on. And the plug-in will simply be under the uh, mechanical bay. Again, this bay is only five feet in width. It'll be three feet longer, so it'll be able to accommodate a lot more space. Also, the water and the sewage will be directly connected there. That's why we have all the bathroom connected right next to the grid. That way, most of the water will be used um, in that area. And the water heater will be an inline heater. That, that way, we won't have to use a 50-gallon or a 5-gallon tank. Um, and yeah, right now it's designed to be hooked up to the grid. Uh, we are working on packages with uh, certain suppliers like LG or Tesla for some solar roofing. Um, that's still in the works. Solar roofing will make the able nook a lot more expensive and the size of the roof is not enough square footage to guarantee enough power uh, to, uh, so we'll, we'll also have some supplementary uh, photovoltaic units on the, on the ground. But that will make, you know, the, 
the attractiveness of the able nook is that the cost is relatively reasonable and adding this package uh is uh still not the price range is still not quite there yet so we're still working the working the kinks out on that side and as far as portability of this unit so if you were to move this say a mile away from one site to another would it be lifted up onto a flatbed and transported or does it have to be taken apart each panel at a time and then put into a trailer and, and move? Like Certain parts of the able nook might, might be disassembled like this side porch and the front porch uh, and maybe the mechanical bay because of the sensitivity of the units. We don't, we don't want to have, uh, we have like, you know, a lot of uh, expensive equipment in the back. So we might want to take that off, but the main house, uh, can be lifted up and that's actually part of the reason why we have leg jacks so that we can lift up the unit and we can slide a slide underneath it and carry it around with a dot approved truck it will be oversized so you will need a special license to move it around because it'll be over eight inches wide or maybe over eight feet wide which is above the florida department of transportation requirements i guess it's kind of hard to know right now just because you're sort of in that in that period of of ramping up for production but what do you envision the overall delivery timeline would be, um, I guess, after the thir first 30 units? Uh, we predict that next year we're going to have another. Oh, this year we consider it a soft launch. Next year we're going to consider it more of a hard launch. We're also going to have a limit on how many units we sell next year because we predict there's going to be a couple hundred. But we want to move too fast, too quick before we know, you know. Uh, if, that we can work out all the glitches and kinks that we might find out in the first 30 units. Um, the overall, we do plan on having uh, at any given time 50 units in storage, so that we can deliver really quick across the nation and assemble it as, as also as quickly. The Able Nook should be able to be built in about a day less if you have a team uh, there. Uh, the bottleneck of the Able Nook is not in its construction or it's in its logistics, it's actually in the approval process with the governments. So because the Able Nook has to be hooked up to the grid, we need to wait for the electricians of the city to come out and approve. We need to wait for the sewage uh, city department to come out and approve, et cetera. So there might, there, we're planning on setting up this kind of uh, uh, license party where we have all the city folk come in and check out the unit all at once so that we can finish up and build it really quickly. But we realize that there are some limitations on the bureaucracy side of the states and the cities, um, which might drag things along. Uh, we do not predict that it should take. We predict that it should take a maximum of two weeks uh, to get from order to delivery and setup. So you'll be able to, if you order one, uh, you know, sometime next year, and you are within our uh, store. We we still have capacity in our storage, and we don't have to order parts outside. Um, we should take you two weeks to walk into your house finished. And is an off the grid uh, design possible? It's quite it's simple, you know, we can definitely have a septic tamp of some yeah. kind that and set that up for the sewage. Uh, when it comes to the electricity, you need to have a source of some kind. Um, if you have enough solar panels on the ground, then you can definitely hook those up. We are work like again, the, it, that would include the extra package because it needs some transformers and some extra uh, hardware in order to translate from photovoltaic to mm -hmm. a battery system to then the able nook. Uh, it, is, it is, should be quite easy and possible to do. Um, when it comes to if you are completely off the grid, like a disaster relief scenario, we are talking to uh, certain FEMA officials and they suggested that it might be easier to completely avoid the bathroom area because FEMA itself will provide trailers with bathrooms and stalls because of the, uh, you know, the sewage uh, problem. You know, we can't, if there's ground, if we're setting them up on a Walmart parking lot, uh, we can't dig the ground and put a septic tank inside. We're going to rely on FEMA and the governments uh, to provide some stalls and bathrooms for that kind of solutions. But the electricity is going to be an easy plug-in. If you're trying to put it into the middle of a forest, uh, you know the problem becomes the power source. It doesn't become the hookup to the able nook. And are there any other zoning or code considerations to keep in mind? The biggest problem that we see in the future is going to be uh, earthquake solutions for the California uh, market, uh, mainly for this and you know the San Diego Rift. Um, 
we do have some technology in mind. We haven't tested it yet. We don't know if it'll work in a bungalow solution yet. Uh, we don't see a reason why it shouldn't. Our civil engineers who are certified in the state of California do not see an issue with it either. But uh, as of now, we don't have an answer on that yet. You know, we still need to. We don't want to bite more than we can chew, and we don't want to overpromise. Our model is always to underpromise and overdeliver. So uh, we want to make sure that we have a solution first. But we're working on that, and that should be done by next year. The maintenance and the warranty. Can you speak a little bit about that? The most likely moment, uh, the most likely part or moment when a, a panel or something is to break is during construction and disassembly of the unit. So, so if you are using one of our licensed teams, the unit will be covered by warranty and we will uh, we will ship you extra parts. There, you know, if you're coming with a team, you're probably going to have extra parts with them so that if something happens, they can change it right away. Um, but if uh, they don't, we'll send you one right away. We'll have storage and shipping is quite fast now. It just doesn't seem to be an issue within the United States. Um, if you build it on your own, it's not covered by warranty because we don't know how you're going to build it. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, an unfortunate, uh, uh, aspect, but we are pl working on some kind of subscription program where essentially you are insured and your able nook will, uh, be covered, uh, if something is to occur to it. Um, and sorry, there was another part to that question. Oh yeah, the, the life, uh, the lifespan of the able nook. So the able nook lifespan, because the materials all are all inert and all relatively uh, safe materials, it should be about 30 years. The biggest, uh, limit is, uh, the, the biggest, uh, or sorry, the, the weakest link to the able nook is the gaskets, which, uh, if with re repetitive use, uh, might have a limit, a lifespan of 10 years, but the, the point of the able nook is that it's quite easily serviceable. So if you're part of the able nook program and you're in the able nook family system of warranties, et cetera, we'll send out a team after 10 years to change the gaskets. Gaskets are relatively cheap part and it can be changed really quickly. This is where the example of the car door uh, gaskets really kicks in. You can open and close the car door pretty much all its lifespan. The problem is uh, how many times you do it and the weather conditions that the car and the gaskets are in. If the gaskets are getting freeze one day and then in uh, temperate sun the next one, they're more likely to crack, um, but they should have a lifespan of 10 years on them. Mm -hmm. Um, if, uh, you don't do too much assembly and disassembly, if you are frequent in doing that, their lifespan might fall, but we will provide, uh, gaskets if that occurs. Like if it's within, if it's below 10 years, we will provide additional gaskets. And if it's, the gaskets are replaceable, then we'll provide the panel with the new gaskets on it. We, we do offer also a recycling program. So if you do need, if you do not, uh, uh, need the same size of able look anymore. You need to downsize because your kids moved out or you, you know, you're an association that doesn't require as many able looks anymore. We will buy back uh, your parts and issue you some kind of credit or, uh, or, um, and then recycle the parts. We are we're very dedicated to have a recycling on it. That's why most of the look is made of aluminum parts and recycled materials. I'm just curious after working with uh, Miami date and various customers, what do you see as the biggest or most misunderstood aspect? In my experience, at least in Stephanie, maybe you have something else to say about this, but in my experience, the most, the biggest issues we've had here in Florida is with um, historical districts which see the able look as a modern and disruptive technology that doesn't necessarily fit with the housing and, and the style of the historical district. And, uh, but we have found uh, workarounds that, that have proven uh, successful with the local governments. In our case scenario, for example, has been Seminole Heights where a lot of the houses have pitched roofs and do not have many curved roofs. And so when they see this nice curved roof, very Apple-esque or Tesla-esque approach, they're worried that there'll be too much of a distraction and a change from the rest of the housing. But uh, Sean Verdesia, the CEO and founder of the company, does live in Seminole Heights, and his house is has been approved to have an extension, which has the curved roof of the Able Nook. So if considered as an extension, it should be fine. Yeah. The, it just looks too modern. And so it's uh, it, the HOAs and other authorities are worried that it might cause a disconnect between what the neighborhood represents 
and what the Able Nook stands for. And so I'm curious, we've seen a lot of unique aspects of this shelter solution. What is the most innovative aspect or what's the most innovative thing about this housing solution? As an engineer, I would say that the most innovative part of the solution is that it doesn't require heavy machinery or cranes to build, only two people and a truck to move it there. That's the principal concept of the Able Nook and we want to stay true to that. It, the parts, we're following a philosophy called uh, Pokiyoki, I believe it is. You know, Maybe don't quote me on that, but it's a Japanese <laughs> concept that you can't make it wrong, essentially. You can't build it the wrong way. They have the ability to reach areas that were not uh, possible prior because if you needed, if you were on a steep hill in like in North Carolina or something and you couldn't reach it with your Mack truck to dump a bunch of terrain or concrete, suddenly you can't build that area. And the, the, the economic outlook of that area is limited, but because of Abonok's ability to be built on stilts and the ability to be uh, carried pretty much by a Ford F-150 on a trailer and the ability to unload it with only two people will allow the Abonok to be built pretty much anywhere as long as the building foots permit it. Uh, the other thing I think is pretty innovative is that the Able Nook can be downsized or upscaled depending on your life needs. So it's a house that can grow and shape your life with you as your life grows. You increase your family, add a couple more modules to have a room for your child. Your child leaves for college, remove those modules or maybe send those modules with him to college. That way he already has a house. Um, you know, there's the limitations of the Able Nook. There's no more empty nesters. Because you just no get rid of the empty part of the nest. <laughs> <laughs> you just send it with them, yes. The, the limitations of the Able Nook are to the imaginations of its users. Um, if you wanted to have a larger house, you can. If you want to have a smaller house, you can. If you want to, uh, you know, if, if you want to turn one of your bedrooms into a second kitchen, you can do that. Or another bathroom, you can add that. It's not a problem. Um, modern uh, most houses now you need to hire a contractor and do all these things it's you know we're we're trying to find a way to change the landscape of what it means to have a modular house so that we give power to the people and remove it from institutions so that any person will be able to uh make and grow its house as they see fit and so i'm just imagining how this would expand so actually like it's interesting so the deck has uh, uh, the roof or and the floor already placed in. So could you essentially turn that into a second bedroom by putting, you know, three more of those panels that you see on the right with the long window sort of on all three sides? And does it instantly become another bedroom? There are some limitations. We we need to change uh, the we will need to change a couple of things to make sure that the electric uh, is serviceable because uh, again, according to uh, a primary house, you need to have outlets every six feet. So if you're going to turn that uh, further wall into a room, you need to have an outlet on that wall. So we're going to have that. there are that's the only limitation though. So essentially, the beams will be electrified or non electrified. We call them, and the electrified beams has power outlets going through it. So you're going to have to change the beams, et cetera. But once you do that, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it'll be, it'll be ready and it'll be another room. Exactly. And the idea is that if you do need to change it to a room, you know, you call us and you tell us, and we should have your able nook in our repertoire. We know what your able nook looks like. Mm. We know where your able nook is at, and we know what you're looking for to change. So we know exactly, okay, we need to change this beam from a standard beam that is not electrified to one that is electrified. We're gonna, we're gonna, we know what we're gonna receive back from you. So we can credit you those materials back to your account. So you don't have to pay a whole new set, but you're getting a little bit of a discount based on what you're getting. Um, we are working now with clients that are more in the nature of business than the nature of uh, residential areas because uh, we found that you know it's easy to it's easier to deal with uh, customers that are related to business because they buy more units and the division is that they want to set up uh, able not campuses and Stephanie I we've had several people approach us about the idea of able not campuses or communities. Uh, using them more for commercial spaces, whether it's out west um, in a remote location, they want to have a kind of a resort area, or in Florida, really different ideas. Anywhere that you made a ha maybe had an upscale resort, or you know how certain areas had 
um, air streams. This is a new idea that instead of having air streams in a resort, have your able nooks in a resort. So we've been approached um, by several people as far as doing multiple units um, at a time. We're currently taking deposits for our second production run since the first one is sold out. And that's that would have delivery time of when would you expect that second run of orders to be completed? Uh, sometime in, 20, in the uh, second quarter of 2021, we're probably going to close sales and uh, start shipping out our second, our second uh, hard launch uh, customers units. Thank you so much for having us on today. We really appreciate it and you know, great questions. We love this collaboration and thank you to you and to Giorgio for putting everything together. And we're here if there's something that, you know, we missed tonight or any other time, just please reach out to us. We're happy to help in any way we can. Yeah, we are open to uh, anyone who wants to visit the Able Nook. We're you now currently, because of COVID's restrictions, we are having a set of uh, limitations with uh, visits, but we are open to visits. Uh, Stephanie has been showing off the Able Nook to a lot of our clients in this uh, situation and maintaining sure that we have distances and everyone is safe. Um, so if anyone is interested in, in looking at the Able Nook, it's definitely welcome to do so. The Able Nook Warehouse is always open to new people and new ideas. And uh, yeah, uh, again, like Stephanie said, we're very humble to be part of this project of, for you guys. And uh, we're really welcome for all these questions and criticisms. And uh, we're happy to be here and answer your questions. Awesome. Well, Stephanie and Giorgio, thank you so much for your time and for the wonderful tour of the Able Nook. It was uh, great seeing uh, kind of insides and outs of this very innovative shelter concept. So thank you so much for the tour. Thank you.